just amusing myself. Um, you gotta do that in life, you know, cause life, you wanna throw curveballs all the time. Make yourself happy first. That's the most important thing. Anyway, 20 years ago, I was a background actor in Hollywood. Uh, I met over 200 celebrities, had a casual conversation with them all. And uh, my best friend was a national TV star, grew up in foster care. His name was Harvey Silver. He died at 36 from seizures. Anyway, he got me into background acting. So I just happened to see this last night, uh, my old acting resume. And I'm just, I gotta make this quick, cause I've already done a lot of stuff on here. But anyway, uh, I was in a trailer of a movie called Talent Country. It was directed by Warren Beatty. It didn't make a lot of money, but it was just cool seeing myself in the trailer of a movie. And I remember, uh, I said something that was really stupid. Uh, I was at a table with a lot of background actors, and I was always the loudest one, usually. And it's older, but like, he was older than me by, I don't know, 10, 20 years. And Warren, Warren Beatty, he's a famous actor, came by, and he was so personable. He talked to us, and he said, yeah, I remember you. You remember? And I said, yeah, he's from a background actor from being um, Goring the Wind. And I hate that movie. And the guy didn't get mad, and Warren Beatty looked kind of shocked, but he was, he was so professional. He was like, all right. But they put me in the trailer of the movie. And then another guy, you know, Johnny uh, Brown, he died recently. And I think he's one of the longest uh, I talked to a celebrity. He played Bookman on Good Times. And uh, he saw how I was just massaging white women on the set. And was, I'm hyperactive. And I think I was in a distraction, distraction. But I stuck out. And uh, I always do send him attention. And I uh, just love attention. And uh, he, we talked for a half hour. He told me a lot of things. Oh, my God. He told me, like, Nina Horne was big in, back in the day. And then she went, uh, they told she couldn't use the pool. Because uh, black that people couldn't use, you know, black, white signs back then. So she put her, her toe and dip it in the pool. And it drained the whole pool. Uh, he told me that story. He was just a, he was a senior in Las Vegas. He was a great guy. Anyway, the shrink is in. <laughs> That's a movie with Courtney Cox, and she's on Friends and uh, the movie Scream. And uh, I remember because I, I think people could tell that I saw my race because I'm the way I act. And uh, I was kind of like she like same age as me. I kind of like flirting with her a little bit, just playfully. And her boyfriend at the time, Lee, became he did uh, he was in Scream too. He played Doofy or something. I don't know. But anyway, he came, well, he's occasionally just casually walked over there while I was talking to him for more than five minutes. So I was like, all right. But I told her how she get started. She said she got started because uh, Bruce Springsteen, she was the girl that Bruce Springsteen pulled up on the stage to dance with her. I thought that was pretty cool. She did soap operas. Bounce. That's a movie. I, this showed me three times in the movie, uh, Ben Affleck. And there's one, one of my biggest break in Hollywood was there's a guy, black actor. He's a great guy. Uh, 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 Joe Morton. Joe Morton, I just remember. He was in Terminator and a uh, brother from another planet. He was a great guy. He saw me, I can see on your set. So they called me in the room. It's me, him, the director, and Ben Affleck. And I didn't look at Ben Affleck's eyes for a minute, like set up the scene or something. But really, he wanted to see my energy. And um, sometimes I lose my focus. And I think if I focus better, they probably gave me a small part in that movie. Anyway, I saw Gwyneth Paltrow in the movie, and she was in one night. That's a high to her. Along for the ride, another movie I was in, uh, Patrick Swayze. I said hi to him briefly. He died, and he was a good actor back in the day. Dirty Dancing and uh, Ghost. Foolish. Oh, yeah, Eddie Griffin. Oh, my God. He is so hilarious in person and everything. He's just a funny guy. And uh, I remember he said something on stage, and uh, I said, hey, Eddie, you know, I was in the front row. I saw my way. The way I did that was I'm so bold. So many things I've been bold in life. And uh, they already picked six people sitting in the front row at the comedy club, Eddie Griffin. And uh, I got so cool with the AD. That's the, the guy that, it's like AD's the guy that uh, plays the background actors. And uh, I was walking like Chuck Berry, walking in there like uh, I was too tall to sit in the front row. But he laughed. And the guy that he picked already, he told him to go back. <laughs> and they showed me the movie Foolish. And then Ashley, uh, Eddie Griffin, said something. I said, you know you got some of the jokes from Richard Pryor, Eddie. And he like, oh, oh, you want some background time. All right. He said, next thing I'm going to talk about is this broke-ass Billy Williams motherfucker. Oh, uh, I mean, cuss. But he was like, he said, he's so broke, he can get a thumb wave, he had to get a finger wave. He ranked with me for like 10 minutes. Everybody was crying, even the director. He said, uh, Billy D, say Co 45. And he did a commercial. Like, Co 45 works every time. I actually did that. And I, said, I told the director, the young white guy, I said, that's going to be in the movie? He said, nah, I didn't tell you to say that. I was so mad, disappointed. Uh, man. Yeah. Uh, that was the movie I was on that, uh, that had a lot of famous people in The woman that got, that got me was, uh, the woman from a Titanic movie, the red-haired one. And I got to talk to her. That was pretty cool. Enemy of the State. Oh, yeah. I grew up with Will Smith. Uh, my dad lived on the street for my must play sports on does Oh, my God. It's ridiculous. And I can't believe at 45 years later, that is the same person. But I do know Will Smith before he's famous. And I wasn't best friends with him, nothing like that. I just, I was one of the neighborhood kids. And, uh, uh, anyway, so I made, as a background actor, I was on Enemy of the State. And that showed me briefly, like, a quick scene. Like, really quick. I had to stop the VCR. <laughs> anyway, uh, but I was in the movie. And, uh, I talked to John Voight, Angelina Jolie's dad. 
And uh, it was pretty cool. And I, I told him uh, my mom's a big fan of Midnight Cowboys, a movie back in the day. And I told him that, and he was the star of it. And it was actually a good movie. I like it very much too. It's very sad. Um, but anyway, uh, and at the end of the like, we've been there all day. People's getting a little tired, and and they play Will Smith. That song was on the radio. Get jiggy with it. And everybody was dancing on the, on the set, and like the producers dancing, with background actors, and. Uh, the craft service day. It was just so surreal. It's a highlight moment, man. I talked to Will Smith on the set. And uh, he said, yeah, I remember you. I asked him again. I said, yeah, I remember you. And then he's, uh, I took a picture of Will Smith and this lady. And then this one of the dumbest things I ever did. And the lady said, let me give you a picture picture of you and Will Smith. And I was like, nah, I'm good. Because I felt kind of funny because I grew up with him. Even Will, Will looked at me. He didn't look at me like crazy. He looked at me like, you know, you want a picture of me? Yeah, I was like, he was cool. I talked to Charlie Mack for like 15 minutes. He was, that was his bodyguard. He was a really nice guy. And uh, I don't know. I just love. I just love talking about my background acting because people. It sounds like I'm bragging, but you, you, everybody's proud of accomplishments. And uh, I did something that's uh, extra, extraordinary. And uh, you know, cause everybody wants to be appreciated. Everybody wants to be noticed, and everybody feels good about themselves. But you don't make it to that. That's the highest level when millions of people can see you. And it's not, I know a coworker saying, well, I'm not into celebrities. I said, I'm not telling you to praise them. I'm saying acknowledge them because they bring joy to millions. And that's more than I see, especially in the work world, which just gets so boring. You know, you do the same thing over and over and over. You're just paying the bills and you got paying this and you got people that's really kind and you got humor and you got all kinds of things. But it's nothing like Hollywood. And I miss that a lot. Anyway, I just want to make the video.